Children should be safe when they go to school. These kids aren't. They're coming home bruised by the fists of cowards, broken by cruel taunts from bullies. Their stories are hard to listen to, and that's exactly why we must. They are the faces of our bullying epidemic. So you, you feel scared about going to school now, Mayor? Definitely, yep. No wonder she's scared. Look what happened to 13-year-old Mia. I've been followed around the school throughout the playgrounds and people have come looking for me, not, not knowing what would, they would do. This is what they did. So they physically attacked you? Yes. And you've got a scar on your cheek there? They not only punched 11-year-old Connor, he says they repeatedly told him to kill himself. When they say these things to you constantly, does it, how does it make you feel? It just makes me feel like I want to do it now. <laughs> so uh, obviously, it's hard to hard to cope with, isn't it, mate? <laughs> He's definitely um, not the same kid Connor was a year ago. No, I didn't feel safe one day. Eleven-year-old Lacey says bullies have made her terrified to go to school. Yeah, I hated every part about it. And then it got to the point where I had to give up work during the week. Nicole is Lacey's mum. I had to drive them to and from school, so then they weren't targeted on the way home or to school. I was five minutes from the school gate when a girl came up behind me, grabbed my hair and started uppercutting me to the face. <laughs> Before landing three body shots and a knee to the head. And had you done anything to deserve this? No. 12-year-old Lena also fears going back to school. I got a severely swollen eye and a bleeding nose and a couple of bruises on my arms. Terrible stuff. Has it made you nervous about going back to school? Yeah. It is a national crisis and the data confirms it. Research released earlier this year found 59% of all school students said they'd experienced some form of bullying. Half of them said it was verbal, one in five said it was physical. They're telling us every day they're going to kill ourselves or they're doing it for us. Connor says he was tormented for several months by the same group of bullies at this primary school before he was attacked. Same sort of thing every day, in go and kill yourself, why are you here, why aren't you dead? And that's what they were saying to him the day that they had him on the ground in a headlock. Connor's mum, Hayley Bates, says she feels the school dismissed her concerns. Just words, they're just kids, nothing's going to happen. But it's easy to see the effect it's had on Connor. See, this is what they don't understand. This is like, when you're at home, this is like what I see of Connor on how upset he is, and the school just thinks it's all a joke. That's not teasing. Like, you're telling my child to kill herself when she's eight, and you're going to say it's teasing. That's not... That's ridiculous. Sam Archer says she took her eight-year-old daughter Izzy out of the school because she was being bullied by the same group of boys as Connor. My eight-year-old is starting is getting anxiety, she's not wanting to go to school, she's shutting down, she's crying every night to me. Sam and Haley aren't the only mothers saying their children have been bullied by the same gang of kids here at this school. We've spoken to two other mums who are telling the same stories. Worse still, Haley tells us this gang of kids has even abused her right here in the playground. And then this kid turned around and he was, you big fat slob. It's all you too, like, oh, the language that was coming out, he was screaming at me, my mum's coming to smash your head in. My dad's coming to your house to smash your head in. Well, I had a big black eye. Um, I had a little cut under here, and then I had, like, a big bubble over here too, and my lip was busted. The bully who attacked Mia has been excluded from the school, but Mia's mum, Kiri Smith, says that was the only punishment. There's no repercussions for these kids. You know, I've had to change her school because she's just begging me, Mum, I need to change schools, I can't go back. And for me not to know if she's going to go to my next school, that's even scarier because the same thing could happen all over again. Which is exactly what happened to 11-year-old Lacey. Her mum, Nicole Blay, pulled her out of one school because she says she was bullied and then one of the bullies followed her to a new school. She come into the class and here he is sitting beside her. And I guess the Education Department would tell us that they're dealing with the issue of bullying, but do you think they are? No, I think they're wasting our, our taxpayers' money. 
you know, they have all these anti-bullying campaigns and that, but it's it's run and rampant. This is the uh, first generation really where there's no reprieve for students who are being bullied. Susan DeCampo counsels kids who've been bullied. Not only goes on in the school environment, uh, after school, uh, but there's no switching off because what happens then is the bullying can often continue online and so uh, these young people are getting no reprieve from the bullying behaviour. This video shows 12-year-old Lena was deliberately attacked and Lena's dad, Hira, says the 16-year-old who attacked her got away with it. As far as we're aware, no charges are being laid and the, the student's being basically given a slap on the wrists. You know, bullying isn't a new thing. No. Why hasn't something been actioned to help protect these kids? Why haven't things changed? We brought this group of parents with kids who are victims of bullying together. Who's going to a new school? We've Who's had, had to change been, schools? We've, we've had to change schools. Everyone. This isn't the first time a current affair has heard from parents angry at the way education departments are handling the issue. So we ask them what they're doing. The Victorian government tells us it's spending $8.9 million on a protective schools package, which includes an incident support centre to help schools respond to bullying. New South Wales directed us to their anti-bullying website, which has strategies to deal with bullying. And the Queensland Government says it's spending $3.5 million implementing recommendations of a task force, which includes $2 million for an awareness and education campaign. But these parents want action taken against the bullies. There's no repercussions for these kids. We were told by the school principal that there is no way that he can ensure the safety of my daughter if she returns to school. Hira has started a petition calling for tougher penalties for bullies, but Susan DeCampo, who counsels the victims, says that doesn't always work. Punitive behaviour against uh, people doesn't, uh, is not often a deterrent, um, and we need to introduce uh, much more comprehensive programs to uh, address this really socially unacceptable behaviour. You need to do something, you need to, you know, get rid of these kids, get them out of the school, like, you know, show them that you aren't just going to allow this stuff to happen because these kids get away with it, more kids are just going to keep doing it as well. <laughs> If your child is being bullied at school, Susan DeCampo says you should complain to the school authorities and keep complaining until something is done. And always remember, if you or someone you know is struggling, there are a number of 24-hour counselling services available. You can speak with someone at Lifeline on 131114. Children and young adults up to 25 can call Kids Helpline. Those details are on your screen and we'll also put the links on our website.